Newt Gunray's influence extends farther than we ever imagined. Welcome, everybody, to Not Uncle to Uncle. This is Watto's Vatos, and I'm joined by two of the greatest co-hosts uh, out there. I'm joined by my main man, Harpo. What is up, gentlemen? This is your boy, Harpo, out here in the Cap City, where everything's shitty. And before I get a little too further in, I'm going to kick it out to the East Coast to our boy, Bert. The break of dawn. Hello, Franklin and Harpo. What's good, Bert? So this is the this is Wado's Vados, the only podcast hosted by three Latinos internationally, coast to coast, worldwide. It's international, coast to coast. How'd you put it, Bert? I'm sorry. Uh, coast to coast, and I don't know something international. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you got either it. way. It's an internationally renowned podcast. We're not like a. Rebel Force Radio and Jimmy <laughs> Mack and you know, sorry, I do want you guys to hate listen to that. It, they really do a good job. It's it's honestly a, it's a complicated it's a complicated relationship I have with that show because they've been doing it forever and they're really good radio guys. But then they'll also have like weird takes like like what if uh what if Phoenix Shan was actually uh disguised as uh, a sand person and helped recuperate Boba Fett. Oh Jesus! Yeah, so I actually kind of have a a podcast that I'm like that with. It's the uh, Rebel, or it's a Star Wars Underworld, and they claim yeah. to be, which they have no way of proving this, but they claim to be the first ever Star Wars podcast. That's a fucking bold claim. Yeah, so they have That's no way of backing a... it up, and but they also are admittedly quite good at their job. So yeah. That's I, I beg, one, to, I beg to differ. There's got to be some dude in the '90s on a ham radio just <laughs> putting out his theories about what's gonna happen when the '97 re-release comes out. Oh yeah, dude, there was some dude in the, like the '90s that was making like VHS manifestos of like how Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc. <laughs> that's true. So that's, I mean, that's the real gem of uh, the Star Wars podcast. I know what you're talking about, Star Wars Underworld. There was one that uh stopped doing episodes a few years uh i think maybe a year and a half ago they stopped i think uh after episode 501 was the whole thing and i didn't realize it till that last episode that that guy was a uh he was a libertarian and it was just like it's like star wars always alive my libertarian was like oh my god i've listened i think it was the star wars report i don't know i'm not i can't confirm that i don't want to put i don't want to throw them under the bus but yeah could have been the Star Wars report that was a podcast that, yeah. That... You know, in a lot of mediums, they want to thin the herd of podcasters. I, I feel like Star Wars needs more. Give me, like, a couple million to choose from. Be- folks... oh, let's find the worst, like, the, the one with the least amount of listens. And, and I want to put it out there, folks. 2024, that's the year we put a podcaster on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I need... Mean... <laughs> Yeah, anything's possible. I want to find the shittiest. God, I wish there's a way to really refine searches to find the shittiest Star Wars podcast. Like they got the they got the the opening theme and they just recorded it off the TV. <laughs> you know, it's one guy and a fucking uh a tin can microphone. And I, I watched a Star Wars podcast that started out like that that has actually become very good and respectable. It's a uh, the Jodo cast. Okay. It, in Legends, there was... Oh, my a, God, yes. <laughs> and it was, like, literally, like, a dude and, like, his, like, three buddies, like, just sitting around one microphone. And now they've gotten to the point to where, like, when uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint was announced, that hadn't even re- been released yet, the lead designer of the of the game went on the Johto cast and did, like, a two-hour interview. No shit. And, the, and that, you know? yeah, they they kind of pivoted at some point where they went from like general Star Wars talk. They're like, you know, maybe if we just focus on like Star Wars gaming, we'll do better. And they've you know they've got themselves a decent following now. So you know, the, anything like Kevin Garnett said, anything is possible. Second on chill it out. That's right. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, it is an inspiring note. I think with podcasting in general, you can just kind of be bad and 
you know, that doesn't necessarily have to matter, you know, and shit could just turn around. Yeah, you know, you speak your truth. And, you know, sometimes your truth is that there's a cabal of politicians holding children in the basement of a pizza place in Washington, D.C. Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> I thought, what's that going on? <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Ugh. Anyways, thank you, Harpo. Uh, so I wanted to discuss uh, episode six. Yeah, episode six of yes. Ahsoka. All right. I mean, I am so mad because... I, you know, I'm in the UK now, and I thought, oh, I get these episodes early now. I get them before you. Oh, and I, you know, I was here in the summer, uh, and I got, and I like was watching Obi Wan. It would first drop at like 7:59 a.m. over here, and uh, then they changed the fucking times for you fucking Yankees. I can't fucking believe it. Hell yeah! So the rest of the world gonna spoil it for us, bastards. Fucking hey. rest of the world. It's the USA, and that don't just mean you, SA. <laughs> Thank you for that. You motherfuckers. You watch it at 6, this man watches it at 9, and I'm here I'm here at fucking 2 a.m. Just, you know, barely away. Pounded I sand. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't fucking fair. I'm unemployed, but it's still not fucking fair, okay? Uh, that was like uh, when we were on vacation in Mexico during, uh, I think it was Mando season 2. We had we brought our laptop, and I had to like sign up for a VPN just so we could watch it. Oh my god, yes! Well, credit the fucking that's that's how I still watch Peacock, man. Oh jeez, I mean, I that's how I, I honestly just use it for below deck. I'm not watching raw. I'm not here fucking trying to see what uh you know the the street profits and uh and and Otis are up to. <laughs> but anyway, so. Ahsoka, episode six, we've finally seen a new galaxy, uh, or one planet of a new galaxy, so, you know, I, I, I don't know if I necessarily expected to, for it to open up, you know, and have it look like fucking Futurama, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's space, space is fucking space, it ain't gonna look that fucking different, it ain't gonna be all crazy either, you know, but I, I do wish there was just a little bit more weirdness into, it's a new fucking galaxy, man. You know? Yeah, at least show us the sun. You know, maybe the sun's got like two suns, or better yet, three suns. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Atlanta the Lost had the triple moons. Yeah, give us something. <laughs> so, yeah, but I did like the Night Sister uh, towers and what have you. Like, I thought. So, overall, I mean, I thought the episode was dope. I think it was. It's giving us that Star Wars but different feeling that Filoni is trying to capture to not depend on, hey, you need to see a Rodian in this episode and some droids. Like, yeah, you need that aesthetic, but you, you need to craft your own story and have your own weirdness and have different droids and different aliens. And we're, we're getting that. Not as much as I'd like, but we're getting it. And that's huge. Uh, we also have, I guess this is the introduction to Night Sisters. I don't count Morgan Elspeth necessarily as our first Night Sister. I just won't, you know. This is the scary, she's too hot. These are like scary witches now. Yeah, these was, are like the full blown Night Sisters. Yeah. What was your reaction, uh, Bert, to seeing live action Night Sisters essentially for the first time? I thought it was great. Like, they didn't go full on with the whole, like, bald witchy aesthetic. Like, they gave the whole, I think they're called the High Mothers, right? Like, the three sure. central figures. Yeah, I it was it. dope. I knew I was watching it the minute, like, we were also introduced to, like, the little turtle guys. I'm like, hmm. this is 100% an Uncle Howard episode because he loves the little dudes. <laughs> he likes the little alien guys. Like, I know he's he fucking losing his shit with that. Uh, he hasn't seen it yet, and he's he hasn't oh! he hasn't he hasn't, uh, he hasn't been feeling this. Uh, so oh, I, I got something he could feel. All right, <laughs> hey, <yo. laughs> yeah, yeah, I it, think it, it, it I was think dope. Around if you saw that, but it was dope. And Franz's introduction and all that. Oof, Chef's kiss, man. He looked good. He looked like he's been eating well. You know. Uh, I still say he must smell like shit because I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure they have no water on that Star Destroyer at this point. 
there's got to be some way to be extracting because they have enough fuel. I mean, you, you have a planet's natural resources, and they're apparently moving about. The Star Destroyer just wasn't there when they got there. Where, where did it just come back from? Just running errands? <laughs> it's on the other side of the planet for some reason. Yeah, Shit, we got company. <laughs> yeah, That's, we have to entertain. That is one thing that I'm just, out of all of the live-action Star Wars shows that I'm totally digging is capital starships in orbit. I think, yeah. like... Was it, uh, I think it was Rogue One was like the yeah. first time we really got that. Yeah. The yeah. Over right Jedi. Yeah. Yes. And that was a good God, shot. Dude. It just, because there was always kind of like, oh, well, can they go into orbit? And it was like, we had like in the Clone Wars, they had like those like small, like the victory class Star Destroyers, what became the victory class Star Destroyers. They yeah. would be in orbit, but yeah, I want to see a full size Star Destroyer in orbit. Like, yeah, or, we, like in like un, you know in the atmosphere yeah we, and we are getting that those little things which i do appreciate that overhead shot was because these are fucking dangerous things these star destroyers are legitimately dangerous in and of themselves and i think we've, we've almost just been like oh it's just a star destroyer i liked how shitty it looked i liked how put together it was um i think yeah well done with that the introduction to Thrawn, he had too much of a blue background behind him, so it was a little bit blue on blue, as some people have pointed out. But overall, the character spot on. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't. I'm glad he doesn't have blue hair. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> a positive that they didn't go too much into. You know, it's a tough decision to make who who can make the cartoon jump, and who needs to be left behind. Okay, yeah. and. I'm glad he made the jump. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think. Who, I don't know who else who was really being petitioned to be the guy to play Thrawn. Some fucking old British actor. I fucking imagine. But you know. yeah, I could have saw like at one point Matt Smith from Doctor Who was considered because he's kind of got like he kind of has a Thrawny voice and he also has like that pronounced forehead. Yeah. So he was being bandied about a little bit, and I think. The guy Richard Grant, who played General Pride, and uh, he was originally in the in the running uh, at some point to be like Old Man Thrawn. Well, but wasn't Matt Smith supposed to be Palpatine? Yeah, he was supposed to be like three different things, and it was like, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Matt. Smith. I mean, he was supposed to be like a young Palpatine clone. Was at least the theory, and I think they shot things, but he was removed. I mean. There is, there's so much. The Rise of Skywalker is the only Star Wars movie without any uh, deleted scenes to its uh, featured. And God knows what would have been if they had deleted a few scenes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, the yeah. Eye of Webbish Bog would have been fucking sick. That yeah. that needed to stay, but you know, I don't like uh, the Rise of Skywalker it's enough. Fine. Yeah, like I'm it, not, I'm not mad at it. Moving on here. Uh, other thoughts on this episode. So, those Nodi guys, those are Uncle Howard guys for sure. Oh, yeah. They, First ballot Hall of Fame Uncle Howard guys. They're yeah. technically dual homeowners because they, you know, have their home on their back and their homes in their little trailer park set up. <laughs> oh, shit. Do you think they're landlords? Oh, no. <laughs> like CM Punk? <laughs> They'd be cancelable offense. <laughs> I was super excited to see them because I was like, oh, this is at least you know, it's something this show more than any other show seems to be doing the work of trying to like get the old heads who are, who hate everything, modern star Wars and the kids together. And it's like, I appreciate what Filoni's trying to do. I don't know if it's going to work or not, because honestly, I think there's like a huge percentage of old star Wars fans who are just dicks now who don't care whether or not something's actually good. They just want something to be mad about. Yeah, but yeah, I really thought that the naughty were like they were cool. Like it wasn't Ewoks. It wasn't you know. It, it was just something that was like cool and fun that you could just go, oh hey, that's cool. They I'm were kind of hoping they become Ewoks. Like little, they have a little revolt. Yeah, man. Like if I'm they're stuck on the, if they're stuck on this other, like you know, across the galaxy planet. Well, that's their shit. home. I mean, they don't know. Yeah, across man. Across the galaxy, that's their home. 
Yeah, they, they don't know that, lost. but they're going to defend their home against uh, all invaders, man. Yeah. I'm just worried if they try to bring them back with them, if they're going to have to go through customs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they get declared, necessarily. Like, I don't know what New Republic policies are on immigrants, man. <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> I, you know? That's uh, a whole new series. That's a whole... <laughs> The whole can of worms right there. I don't want to really touch. Uh, I was really impressed with the naughties. I was too. I was too overall. Uh, other things from this episode here. So Ezra, he wasn't fucking dressed like a character on Doug. I like that. I thought he looked good. Uh, and I'm not an Ezra fan, but I thought he looked good. Yeah, he's in his uh peyote and mushroom era right now. <laughs> it's like the Force, man. It's like it's like you can use it. You know, it's not always there when you want it to be. I just think this show is amazing because it's got the two characters that were, like, so viscerally hated when they first became part of the Star Wars universe in Ezra and Ahsoka. Yes, true. And it's kind of like walking them through their, like, Ahsoka more so than Ezra had the chance to, like, redeem herself, I think. Yes. But Ezra, towards the end, by the end of Rebels, I was fine with Ezra. The slingshot was gone. The... (laughs) The, he got the haircut, and I was like, okay, he's looking like a normal person now, and not like you know, Michael Sarah in Star Wars. <laughs> Slingshot and Snips uh, being redeemed here. Uh, I, I, I thought he got better as the season went on as well, but I also had a problem with him being him doing things that Luke Skywalker hadn't done, but I guess that's just because Luke, yeah, his training was a, was a bit different. I just didn't like the idea that well, fucking Ezra Bridger's more powerful than Luke Skywalker, too, now? Like, what the And fuck? older, too. And older. Yeah, he is. Uh, is he older? Yeah, I guess. One day, yeah. Hold on, hold on. It's oh, true, that'll, yeah, Oh, my then... God. Ezra was born on Empire Day, which yes. was the day that the Empire was began. Luke was born the next day, right? No, yeah. hold on a is... second. The, it, Empire Day is considered when... Palpatine was like fucking the new galactic empire. Or was it the day that he like declared himself emperor? Here's my thing. I'm... Uh, Luke is 18 or 19, uh, A New Hope, right? Yes. yes. How the Battle of Lethal is like, what, one year before A New Hope? That Ezra's like 15, 16 there? He ain't a man. But Ezra was born on Empire Day. We know that for sure. That's canon. Okay, he was born on Empire Day. How many BBY is that? I think they're the same age, but he's a day older, so 19. Okay. All yeah, right. that oh, makes regard- sense. Well, regardless, yeah. We don't know for sure what day Leia and Luke were born on, but it was either the same day or a day later, in my opinion. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, so they're Good about call, the same Bird. Age. I would have never put that together. No. Yeah, statistician. Yeah, you, you, you're doing the homework, man. You're doing the homework, you know? The cream of the crack! So, I don't have too many notes on this episode. Um, Captain Enoch, uh, you alluded to to this, Harpo, sort of, uh, of the character that... What's his face? Uh, Wes Chatham, yeah. Actor Wes Chatham is portraying, or portraying Captain Enoch, which I might point out, it's very close to Captain Eunuch. But uh, yeah. that's neither here nor there. So I want to ask you guys a couple of things here about Enoch. Do you think that he is actually alive? Good question. Uh, Franklin, go ahead. Thank you, Bert. Uh, I, I I initially thought he was a Bicentennial man. I thought he was like Robin Williams and Bicentennial <laughs> man. I just thought like, oh, this is kind of a weird thing. Why doesn't his, why doesn't his mouth move? You know? Like, whatever. Um uh is he is he somebody i don't think he's somebody and i think people will be upset by it i think he's uh i I saw like a comment on instagram like he's probably just more green smoke you know i think all these people i think all the stormtroopers and cat i think they're all are they all zombies i don't i mean i think somebody has to be real so no i change i think the stormtroopers i think they're zombies or green smoke or whatever night sister magic captain enoch i think he was just like a a resident of, of that fucking place and kind of helped out Thrawn, you know, adapt to Peridia. And yeah, I, I think Stormtroopers, Green Smoke, Night Sister Magic, 
and Captain Enoch, Bicentennial Man. There's there's a real man with real feelings under there. All right. How about you, Bert? Well, so I kind of saw it on the Star Wars UK Instagram account. They officially called them the Night Troopers. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And on one of the, I think it was Screen Crush's YouTube, they talked about, like, oh, yeah, like, there, if you look at the like the shot where Franz walking, you see the arbor. A lot of them, or almost all of them, are wrapped in some kind of red ribbon type thing, mm-hmm. which might be like Night Sister Garmin or magic keeping them alive, like a binding spell type thing. Mm-hmm. It's very associated with like what Maul had in his apartment, and uh, along with the photo of Satine, uh, <laughs> the drawing of Satine that he had, that creep shit. There was also, um, the one scene where I think uh, right after Balin and Shin left that Fraun was like uh, unveiling like his tactics to Morgan saying like, oh, send two squads when Balin gives a signal. And she's like, oh, you should send more. And he's like, our numbers got depleted since we've been here. Two is just fine. So, so it's wouldn't like, that mean they're human? Or like, well, I mean, I guess you can't just. I guess or they might have died off like yeah. since, since they've been there. Yeah, so it, it's it's a tough one here, I guess. Also, as a stormtrooper, like as a human, like what what motivation do you have to just to live in that fucking world? Like, damn, uh, to get off of it. Like, damn, these are the only sure guys with a ship around here. True, so, that is a good point. So all this kind of leads me to another question related to the stormtroopers, and then I'll have a a little follow up to that. What do you think that the stormtroopers were loading onto the star destroyer in those coffin looking things? Yes, they were like they mentioned the catacombs, right? Yes. And yeah. Are are they are they loading up night sisters? They're very similar to they were loading up and it looks similar to uh Boba Fett and company loading up Han and Carbonite kind of deal. They kind of just hover. Uh yeah. I don't I don't fucking know what they were loading. I don't I don't think it's night sisters. Why can't they just they they can't fly another way? They can't uh you know, it's some something fucking dark sided. I got nothing. Yeah, and that also made me think, like, how do you guys feel about Star Wars is now getting spooky? I don't mind it. it, needs, it, it there's a there's a threshold. There's a threshold. Uh, I mean, Clone Wars got fucking ridiculous, but I don't necessarily the cartoons. And I mean, fucking Kanan and Sabine were possessed uh, and rebels. You know, so yeah, I could go for some spooky Star Wars. Yeah, I think there's a line. I don't know what it is necessarily. The night because you could still tie in night sister magic to the force is just culturally what they what they view it as and how. The, but it's all the force essentially, but with a different name is my take. Okay. So, okay. So I, my yeah. my theory on the coffins is it's some sort of dead bodies, like it could be dead night sisters, it could be dead stormtroopers. But there's this, like, 1% chance of it being something from Legends, Mm. from uh, the Thrawn trilogy. Thrawn had these little, like, creatures called, like, Isalamiri that Mm -hmm. could repel the Force. Like, they emitted a bubble around them where the Force just didn't work. Oh, yeah. I've seen the drawing of, like, he has two of them floating, like, over his head. Yeah. So... There's like this is like Dion Waiters with the game on the line pulling up from <laughs> forty chance of happening. Hey, it, and it's gone in before, baby. It's it has gone in before, but it's also missed quite a bit. Oh, so it's this, missed a lot. This is just something that I just kind of wanted to throw out there, just as like a little tease. I like it. I like and it I'm, more than Darth Maul theories. I think that needs to be put to rest already. Yeah, and I I got something here too about uh, Captain Enoch's helmet. So, are you gentlemen familiar with the Japanese art of kintsugi? Yes. No. So, Bert is. Is that the plate one? Where, like, a plate breaks and you get yes, the gold? Yes, it's with, like, in, yeah, pottery breaks and, and they with... fill it in with gold. Right. I got some strong kintsugi vibes from that helmet. Oh, it's all over. Like, even on oh, the shit. Star Destroyer, when you see, like, the close-up, like... You'll see the where the purgle damaged it at the finale of Rebels. It's been kind of rebuilt, like with all that gold, like structural work. So this episode for me was just filled with like samurai and Japanese references, and 
if that's the direction they're going, I am a hundred and ten percent here for it. I'm with it. I'm with it so far. Uh, listener of the show, John, uh, our our boy, you know, Harpo, yeah. you know, John. I know John. Uh, he wanted a shout out, so I figured, and he was worthy of one here because he brought up like. You know, the fact like this is asking a lot for people who did not watch Rebels and Clone Wars. This is asking a lot. And, uh, you know, I think as you brought up Harpo, I think you're, it really illustrates your point that this is, whether you like it or not, like the British Bulldog winning SummerSlam 92. <laughs> you, you, they're trying to merge it. They're trying to merge it. And we're getting not just like Rebels and Clone Wars, but the spookiness of of Star Wars and this dark magic. I have a theory. It could be the Snoke. It could be the Snoke. Hey, board the Snoke. Until I see evidence otherwise, I'm forced to believe that that is a possibility. It's Snoke. It's his robes. It's his golden robes. <laughs> you remember, you know, he hung out outside of the galaxy kind of thing, or at least the this origin. It's his ring that, that I mean... <laughs> Fuck. Are, are we going gonna... to... That was the best <laughs> clickbait ever, dude. I, I showed that to a couple of my friends, and they were like, if I saw that, I would click on it. I'm glad. I'll clip part of the episode and have that as a YouTube thumbnail for us. Yeah, well, it, it, it turns out that during all this time, Fron just became, like, his smithers, like, <laughs> helping him around. <laughs> Fron, fetch me my slippers. <laughs> So, right away Snoke. so there was actually one more samurai reference too I don't know if you gentlemen caught it when uh, Balin Skull refers to Ezra as uh, part of a, a group of Boken Jedi who were oh yeah the so Boken is uh, the wooden sword that samurai used when they trained and he somehow found a way to turn that into a slur so props oh. for our boy Balin like that was it. very el- elitist of him. It was almost like the equivalent of the Jedi equivalent. Like I went to Harvard, right? Oh yeah, like the, he spent time in the academy, and like yeah. he expects more of his apprentice. Like a oh, Boken Jedi, yeah. They they, they kind of fuck around, and I kind of like that distinction, though, because you have you know whatever survivors of Order sixty six, you have the the softy brother Jedi. You need to like distinguish the, the okay. You need to put over Luke's accomplishments at the end of the day, subconsciously. Like Cal Kestis and Ezra Bridger Hell, are not Cain. Uh, Cain and sacrifice. Cain was a student. He died, and I think his arc was great. I love Cain's arc. But and you need to put over Obi Wan Survivor. You need to put over the heavy hitters. These guys are jobbers that managed to fucking live. Ezra Bridger, Cal Kestis are not. A uh, Luke Skywalker equivalent. Yet we've oh, seen Cat, Cal was stuff. from the temple, though. Barely. Yeah. yeah. Barely. He's, right He's a fuck. He's yeah. a nerd. He, barely. Fucking so, gentlemen, barely. I gotta ask you, though. Grogu, Boken Jedi? He's not even a Jedi. He oh. rejected the teachings. He's a bum. He's a bum. <laughs> bum. A... Wait, Grogu... you, know who, you know who else yeah. traded the temple? All those younglings that Anakin cut down. So... Huh. There's, uh, you know, there's a distinction to be made. Uh, yeah, you know, they got trained in the temple, but uh, they're dead as fuck. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's Balin. There's, you just have to. It's not so much. You just have to differentiate, man. You just have to. There, there needs to be a stratosphere here. You know, like Obi Wan, Luke, all that. Like they're at the top there, and you know, and then you have some guys who cut, who survived, but they didn't live much of a fucking life. You know. That's, That's true. you know, and we still have the the constant dilemma now of uh, where are Oak, Ahsoka and Ezra during a fucking. The I don't last think we're Jedi. gonna like that answer. I mean, I'm fine with them deciding not to get involved. Like, oh, I have to go meet Luke Skywalker and help. Well, out. Yeah. like that's not how the world works. No, they're, they're, like you know, it's, there's got to be tons of Jedi that actually survived who are just kind of like. Oh well, I guess I'm done with that now. Yeah, right. Like I gotta get a job. I gotta get a nine to five. You know, <laughs> guess it's time to go back to art school. <laughs> Dang you, mother! 
<laughs> so, I'm just really bummed though that we're only getting one uh, season of Ray Stevenson because yeah, Phelan Skull is just such a badass. I love that character so much. He is great. He's kind of like, what if Count Dooku kind of got his way and recruited Obi Wan and like went his own went his own little path away from the Emperor? He kind of gives me vibes of that, like a character just based off of slight different de- decision making of uh, Count. Count Dooku. Yeah, it's this season just keeps you know throwing surprises at me. It was like things I didn't really think were gonna happen. And mm-hmm. uh Valen Skull, like when I first saw the like, pictures of him, I was like, oh okay, just yeah, random dark side force user, but it's like, oh actually no, he's got levels to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh and he's taking in Shin. We need to learn more about her. Uh but Everybody suspects now that she's going to turn. She does not like witches. She really just keeps like more witches. Like I don't blame you know. her. They're creepy as fuck. Hell you yeah, know, like I, I rewatched the episode before we started filming and I noticed like when they did the whole scene where they arrived outside the planet and they were transporting Sabine from her jail cell to like the little transport thing. As they were coming in, Shin gives uh, Sabine a look not even like in a threatening gaze, but in a, like she senses something bad, and like Sabine also knows it. Type like there's something bad on this planet. Type mm, deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree with you. I was not doing that to diminish your point, but I, I generally agree with you. And there's definitely How dare you? <laughs> there's, there's definitely some weird. I do like that they have a code. The baddies, you know, of just like. Hey, you got to do right by Sabine. You made a deal kind of thing. Like, just because they're villains doesn't have to be one dimensional. Like, you know, it's like, well, we tricked you, uh, you know, you know, it kind of thing. Right. Like, I, 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 it, I we want to see villains with layers and, and, and a code of ethics as opposed to just like nothing against Palpatine, but that's more manipulative and all evil as opposed to these shades of gray, uh, you know. Not that we need gray Jedi. I, I know that's a whole. Uh, they don't like. They don't like that topic there in the Lucasfilm. Freddie Prince Jr. doesn't like it. But you need something with layers. And I'm not I mean, I also I also like that they're not strictly like goons for Thrawn and Morgan. Like no. Balin's got his own agenda. He's like, there's power out here. I can feel the power out here. So yeah. Harpo, Bert, yeah. what is he trying to find? See, that's the thing. They've kept that ball in the air this whole first six episodes. Normally, by now, if they teased me with something like this from day one, by about episode three or four, I'd be like, oh, okay, I don't just, I don't give a shit about ah, what yeah. he's trying to do. That's just how it would normally be. But for mm-hmm. whatever reason, they've managed to keep me engaged and like wondering, wow, I mean, if if he says it's unlimited power, then it must be something huge. It's Snoke. It's gotta be. <laughs> it's Snoke. It's... He's been sitting in a milk bath out there this whole time. <laughs> all paths lead to Snoke. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Yeah, that's right, Ashley. <laughs> I need to speak to you about whose cock my daughter's been sucking. <laughs> hey, now. That's what, you want, that's what he's going to ask Snoke here, but anyways. <laughs> Uh, another question, a quick one here, uh, Bert, and then Harpo. Is, is Shin is Shin Hadi gonna turn? Uh I don't know if she'll turn one hundred percent because you know there's the whole murder thing. She did murder a bunch of people on that Rebel cruiser. Well, there's so, the guy who, did young, who killed Youngling. So, oh yeah, yeah, sure. We forgot all about that. He's <laughs> he's he's zaddy now, I guess. Um, I feel she might doing self-preservation help them out so they can probably get off out of there type deal okay i like that theory harpo what about you uh i don't know i mean to me she's kind of like uh the dollar store version of ventress and the thing that i am kind of like intrigued but also bothered by is that she still has a padawan a padawan braid despite you know not being a jedi and I don't know. I don't know what she's getting out of this. Yeah, that that's what we don't know. Uh, 
We know Balin has given some promises. Uh, I think there's something of a life debt to Balin. I think Balin likes, as he's mentioned, he likes the idea of the Jedi Order and certain aspects in its teachings. He'll obviously pass down, and then others he will not follow. Um, Yeah, this kind of gives me, like, Bendu vibes from uh, Rebels, like when Kanan got blinded and he discovered the Bendu. Yeah. It's kind of like that, but, like, not as philosophical and more like, yeah, no, actually, you know, there's a few light side things that are cool, but the dark side's way cooler. That's what I'm kind of getting from them. And also there's, I can't shake this ever since this one podcast mentioned that uh, when Elon Musk broke up with Grimes, there was a picture of Grimes out in public mm. and she looks exactly like Shin. Mm. So they call her Darth or Darth Grimes. So it's like, what a sick joke. Right. Every time I see her, that's what I. That's uh, I, what the first thing that pops in my head. They ruined her character for me. No, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the got the Star Wars theory guy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Star Wars theory. Is that the one that got canceled, or that is that Star canceled. Wars Explained? No, Star Wars Explained is pretty, pretty timid. I mean, pretty, one of those two guys got canceled. I think. Canceled. It's, I think Theory got, like, in trouble with Lucasfilm for, like, a Darth Vader fan film type thing he did. And I don't know if he got canceled. He's got in trouble for, like, posting YouTube icons of spoilers when the show drops. But canceled? I don't know. I don't. Well, I don't one of them should be canceled. <laughs> Rule of two. <laughs> Rule of two, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, yes, he, uh, he has a... Uh, I love Shin Batty uh, hat, and I thought it's just in very poor taste. Oh, it's a, not classy. I, it's there's a classy way to be horny, and uh, that's just not it. Think, that's not it. You know, I see that. I think. Shut up, bitch. You know, <laughs> that's all due respect to Star Wars theory. He does good videos. Like honestly, he does good ass videos of just like what would have happened if Newt Gunray lived, and it's like. Damn, he really went off on one. That's pretty good. That's a good butterfly effect. That you is. know? But he's canceled, apparently. I don't for reasons me or you don't. Well, it's pending. Know. It's pending. <laughs> it's pending. <laughs> yeah. It's pending on based on if he does the show and <laughs> becomes a guest. Uh, any, I don't have any other notes for this episode. Uh, Shampoodler pointed out um, that the Stormtrooper is just should have just been just jacking it immediately at the sight at the first sight of women in the last 10 years here. Yeah. I think that's more proof that the fact that they weren't is more proof of uh, the theory that they're, you know, night sister powered dead stormtroopers. What about captain Enoch? <laughs> I mean, so that's one thing I did want to ask you about captain Enoch. To me, the thing that I'm thinking he's dead was his voice. Right. But, but that could also be explained as, Oh yeah, they haven't been resupplied in nine years, so yeah. <laughs> all their shit's breaking down. But what did he say to, to Sabine when she left? Like happy? It wasn't like happy travels. It's like happy oh no, travels. that was that wasn't Enoch though. Like where we watched, it was like Storm another Trooper. trooper and yeah. he said, um, "Many men died on the or don't make it out on the trail." Yeah. And he's like, "Good, good time dying or some shit like that." Have die a nice well. time dying. Was it die well or something like that? die, die well. well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. die well is like. You mean? Don't think you mean that. I swear I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> or no, it was Chris Gethard. That's he has a tattoo that says "Lose Well." That's what it was. Ah, uh, all right. Another t- question here: What message is Thrawn sending out? Because they like at the end he had to send an email or something through the the Night Sister magic uh, web thing. I think it was a message to Captain Paleon and the rest of the Imperial Remnant, being like, "Hey, I'm coming. Get your shit together." Nice. Okay, that's my theory. That's that. I think that's about right. I think that's what uh, he's like. He can't because he can't always communicate with him. He's like, he's like, you know, Captain Paleon is like the guy with the hot girlfriend who goes to another school or lives in Canada and is a model. But like, <laughs> you can't prove Thrawn's there, but like, you know, they're they are in contact, but he doesn't have the receipts. Like, he can't show you screenshots, but trust me, they're in contact. Yeah, trust me, bro. <laughs> she goes to another school. All right, so um, yeah, that was that was about all I had here. Uh, what I guess last question, Bert? Uh, what do you think Thrawn does to pass the time? Uh 
just, you know, uh, he wears his uniform for an hour, then just takes it off and lets it air air out. <laughs> and just, like, I guess, sunbathe on top of the Star Destroyer, because what else are you going to do out there? <laughs> you sound like you've been drinking this early in the morning, bro. <laughs> for a guy that studies art, he probably just found, like, a bunch of, like, naughty, like, cave drawings or something. And just sits there, like, watches them for hours. <laughs> Jacking off like there's no tomorrow. Just spanking like, it and spanking it some more. <laughs> yeah, what's he gonna do? It's just like, well, it's just us boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got and that then it begs the question of what the Star Destroyer has. Like, you know, we know the Death Star had a bar, we know the Death Star had like like I don't say a cinema, but there is something socially for the people that inhabited it. You know? So I don't know, like, what does a Star Destroyer have? It might have a recreational room. I'm sure it has a gym. I'm picturing that, like, the like the upper deck is kind of like, you know, when you see aircraft carriers that they're just shooting golf balls in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he goes up top there, like a like a top, like down periscope at the top of the submarine type thing. And just, yeah, they have, yeah. like, their one hour shit meeting or, like, 30 yeah. minutes, and it's like, well, what's on the agenda today? Well, uh, nothing again. All right, I'll see you guys up top. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think that about that about covers it. You know, so good episode. All right, so Harpo, you came up with this idea, and I guess I'll let you introduce it. Oh, uh, okay. The segment, the, the three. Oh man, um, I can't find my notes here. Um, I I could introduce it if you yeah like. you introduce it because I forgot one of the species that is fine. So Harpo came up with the idea of, and Bert also has a a crasser idea we'll get to right after. This one is simple: keep one, eat one, and delete one. And we're choosing the Ewoks, the Porgs, and the Noti from this episode. The little turtle type creatures who uh, dress rather spiffy, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so the concept is. We're going to keep one as a pet, we're mm-hmm. going to eat one as a meal, and we're going to delete one into extinction. Jesus. Grim. These are so cute. And you're going to just, yeah. Wow. Uh, Bert, do you, are you as bold to start us off on this? Because I need oh, a moment to y- think. Yes, I will. So, so which one were, are we going to leave for like the last to just, all right, I uh, guess... Like- Extinct will be last, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I would actually keep the Nodi. Because they seem like, you know, chill. They got their little caravan, their little campers, mm. and it's like, yo, you guys are just traveling gypsies. You're just like a more friendly Jawa, pretty much. <laughs> I would definitely eat a porg. Like, Chewie already grilled them up one time. I'm like, damn, that shit looks like good eats, bro. They look juicy. They look juicy. They don't. They don't like they can defend themselves. It's just like ah, eh, whatever. And birds, extinct Ewoks. <laughs> they wanted to eat people, man. That's cannibalism, dude. Well, I had a wank this morning thinking about your mum's tits. Sorry. Is that a lie? That's not the one. I <laughs> My to word. <laughs> My word. That was not the one I had. So, um, I would go with. Hold on, I think I would eat the porg as well. It did look juicy and chewy cooked it up it felt like a waste to not eat it after all that uh i would keep the ewoks it's a legacy thing you know they helped out big they were part of the rebellion in a sense they fought we got to see them fight we haven't seen the nodi fight we see them hide a lot so and i guess i mean shit we just met man we just met i got no ties to you the nodi have to go the no i mean if you're, you know, they would be deleted. I'm sorry. You know, Ezra, you're by yourself. You have no friends now. You're a loser. Like, it, it would be, if the Nodi were not to ex- to exist, Ezra wouldn't have any friends. Uh, but if the Ewoks were to not exist, uh, the Rebellion would not have won. Big uh, ass titties! <laughs> yeah. uh, Bert and I park our car in the same garage here. Um, I'm keeping a Naughty because... They just seem like they'd be cool to hang out with. It's like maybe I could teach them how to like write a segue. 
Um, not I Your myself taxes. don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, teach them how to smoke. You know, teach them how to drive cars. Like, uh, you know, just you know, just put them out there. Let them live their best lives. And uh, I would eat a pork because Chewie didn't get to because he was shamed out of it by Ryan Johnson's pro-vegan agenda. I hate them! (laughs) And I would delete the Ewoks because, let's be honest, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, they've already lived through two extinction-level events. When the second Death Star blew up, everybody on the surface of Endor should have died, according to Science Nerd. And uh, also, when that Star Destroyer blew up over Endor in uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker, they should have died then, too, just from shrapnel. That, and I'm also would, you know, I don't think I'd be able to fall asleep knowing that there's an Ewok in my house. Because I could wake (laughs) up and have a spear pointed at my face. (laughs) That's pretty fair. All right. I, I I I could come around to that. I'm not, I'm not too far off from you guys here, but yeah. Um, and then the next one, Bert, I, I guess you could explain this. This is your idea. Oh, now we're getting into Waddles Vados after dark. Yeah. <laughs> the kids need to tune out for the next five minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> so anyone under 18, uh, earmuffs for the next segment. Uh, get we're going to get into, out. We're getting into the horny jail here, boys. Bonk, bonk. And we're going to do our version of a uh, fuck, Mary kill. And we're doing aliens and new species. So, gentlemen, uh, Franklin, I guess I'll start with you. Mother. Fuck, Mary, kill. Oh. Twi'lek? Uh-huh. Asakajans? I don't know if I pronounced it right. Asakajans? Or the Night Sisters. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, I'm the only one who's fucking, who has the handler that listens to the show. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope you guys are happy. I hope uh, I hope you're thrilled with this, uh, but no. Uh, hopefully, they haven't made it this far. It's 47 minutes, uh, but yeah, you know what? They listen to Uncle to Uncle too, so there's no fucking yeah. They've made it. All right. Uh, fuck Mary Kill, uh, Twi'lex, Ascagians, Night Sisters. All right. This is crass, you know, but uh, you fuck a Twi'lek, you know. Uh, I suppose uh, you know it's uh again i'm a very yeah uh, these are the rules i'm just following the rules of the game all right can't be mad at me all right didn't choose the game the game i didn't chose choose you. the game i didn't choose the game bert came up with the game uh i guess uh i'd kill the Ascagians, uh because they're just they're not for me man they're not for me all right you know dog tits i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry that's just i'm a little bit shallow and i would marry a night sister i think uh that is that's wow. the that's the key i would marry a night sister that's uh you know so yeah i think just because you know they're supportive they're they're into the arts you know i'll be at the dark arts but it's still the arts still, <laughs> still very arts. cultured still, the arts. still very cultured and you know, uh, there's a long yeah. history. Yeah, fucking hell, man. You know, go, you know, go to gigs and uh, you know, fucking do some night sister magic and have a good time. Hey, slick, pop a beer, and everything seems twice as good. So yeah, all right. Guys have, uh, now that we put Franklin through that awkwardness, Harpo. <laughs> all right. Um, for the uninitiated, the Escagians. That's uh, as was a fer- referred to by uh franklin as dog tits that's yarna from jabba's palace the old matrony lady that was dancing that looked to have multiple multiple sets of breasts hence the name dog tits so uh she's going on my fuck list (laughs) whoa (laughs) buddy because six tits man (laughs) like you know you just want to say you did it um now, for my Mary, I had to do a little bit of thinking on this because uh, the Clone Wars had some dark sisters who, you know, you know maybe some of their like younger warriors mm. can get it. But at the end of the day, I keep coming back to uh, what was uh, 
Bill Burr's character's name on Mando? Uh, Migs Mayfeld? Yeah, Mayfeld. I keep coming back to him going, you crazy twee to the <laughs> to the the lady that was in their crew. And yes. I get the feeling that Twilight ladies might be a little crazy. And, you know, I've never really uh, <laughs> had that experience. So I would marry the crazy twee. They're, they're, okay, they are built different. They are. And, uh, I mean, everyone that we've seen has been incredibly hot. Like, we had Jennifer Beals played one, for God's sake. Right, yeah. We had the one that in Jabba's Palace that was like, she was like in a impossible situation, and yet she still was willing to fight. And I'm like, okay, they got a little bit of spirit there. And then the aforementioned one from uh, Mando season one. So uh, that's wife material to me. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, the kill, uh, unfortunately, in this case, would be the Dark Sisters. But I don't think it'd be that bad because they would probably come back to life anyways. It haunt the shit out of you, buddy. Good luck. <laughs> Albert, well, since it's uh, come back to the creator himself, uh, I would have to, uh, for fuck, I'd say a night sister because ain't no one party like golf chicks. That's just <laughs> how it is. <laughs> and let me tell you, Marin from Jedi Survivor and Fallen Order, oof, mm-hmm. that's a that's a spicy meatball there. <laughs> and then uh, Mary, you know what? Twi'leks are strong, faithful warriors and easy on the eyes. So, yeah, that's my uh, Mary. And yeah. Kill, you know what? They always say more than a handful is a waste, and I have no idea what to do with six-ass honkers, bro. <laughs> Get out of here. Big I got six kid. hands. <laughs> no, but you got two feet and a mouth. So that just leaves one. <laughs> Christ, man. This fucking show how the fuck are you guys are the ones going to get me more in trouble than uncle howard i have no idea (laughs) nonetheless all right so brilliant brilliant stuff here a lot to think about a lot to chew on uh literally in your end harper (laughs) a lot to uh to suck on there so okay uh moving on here finally moving on uh outside of star wars here everything exists uh is essentially a Star Wars, including professional wrestling. But sometimes professional wrestling, uh, you know, can be a bit dark-sided in case of uh, all the released talent from WWE. Uh, Bert, how how much did you cry when you heard about Mad Cat Moss uh, being released? I don't know if crying's the right word, more for fearful for Kenta's health because he's coming (laughs) after him for a third time. (laughs) <laughs> fucking guy, man. Learn a hip toss. He fucking almost paralyzed him with a power slam. Like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> fucking guy, man. Well, are, is this the last we're going to see of the suspenders? I mean, I, 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 I said in our other chat, like, half these people that have never worked anywhere else are in for a rude awakening when they have to, like, go to the indies, even AEW, like, they expect, like, oh, you have some work. We don't have any fucking developmental, like, I don't know what you guys are up to. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't looked at the full list. I mean, I got a more or less an idea of it, uh, you know. It's, uh... Fuck, how much get... from, uh, how much from Triple H's Infinity Gauntlet did he lose? <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. Yeah. Top dollar's gone. That's, like, four stones right there. <laughs> Is he gonna do yeah. another thank you rap? If uh, Karen Cross is gone, then we know for sure <laughs> that him and Stephanie are living in separate houses. <laughs> oh my god, a guy nobody asked for. Dude, like, it's like just... it's crazy because like some of the guys that they cut, I was like, like Mustafa Ali. I'm like, I see that guy potentially being something. Yeah, even though I think he's like 36 now, but it's like that. That seems to matter less and less nowadays because guys are like still in their mid forties, you know, working full time schedules. So, but then, then I see like a guy like Ridge Holland, who fucking legit peril like almost paralyzed Big E, like dumped him on his head, broke his neck, probably ended his career. That guy is somehow still around. That's insane! Holy shit! That's 
yeah, there's no, I, I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't have it explained to me. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, ultimately, you know, this is what happens when you have shareholders and this fucking, I mean, it, they couldn't be a fucking more uh, heartless corporation. So it's not exactly, you know, no, no business can pretend to have family values and, you know, I mean, and then just drop a bunch of guys all at once like this, you know. So what but, was the what was yeah. the last WWE release that legitimately shocked you? Uh, interesting question, man. Fuck, I got I got to think a little bit about uh, about that one. You know, the Dudleys kind of came as a surprise, but they're just kind of winding down. Um, I don't know, Bert. You want to get this one, and then uh, I think uh, William Regal being released surprised me. That was. I guess like, like yeah, Braun. yeah, because he was so like like neck deep in NXT. Yeah, I think Strowman. There was just a point where it's like they're getting rid of anybody, and so it's like there's it's tough to be like surprised anymore at this point. I think maybe like more earlier in the, like the late nineties, two thousands, like it was more surprising, and then now it's just like, but Braun was a weird one. Like yo, that's like a fucking. Well, like, they released Bray too at the same time, I believe. That was equally wild. Like that, why that that made no sense. I don't. Wasn't you know. it during the time like they were speculating? Oh, the company might get sold to Saudi Arabia, and they were like trying to liquidate a bunch of high yeah, dollar was, contracts. And then they, as soon as they sell it, they do the same thing again. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. so you're just assholes. I get it. Yeah, I mean, essentially. So um, for me, I got to go back a little further than even that. The last one that legitimately shocked me was Funaki because he had survived like 50 bloody like Fridays where they just kept cutting people left and right. And then eventually, like when they finally released, him, I was like, oh, my God, no one's safe. Yeah, that's it. Holy shit. Like Bob Holly kind of had those vibes, but it was more like you stupid hick. You just fucking you just you just keep hanging in there. Your fucking luck's gonna run out at some point, you dumbass. Like, Did they even like publicly release him or it was just one of those like, oh his contract just ended and left? I imagine it was it was a well, I don't know. You, you never know how much they wanted to cost cut, but with Cause Bob right now, Holly. like when they do the public releases, it's almost like a public firing at the same time. It's like oh, yeah. man, let me just like wind down and leave out the back door. You're gonna tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. There's no the, yeah. What was the guitar guy that they just released? Not Elias, the like Rick the Boogs. Big, yeah, Rick Boogs, <laughs> the so, other guitar guy. I had no clue who the fuck that guy was, and I turned on. I think it was Mania, and he comes out and he's like playing his guitar. I was like, who the fuck is guitar playing Ted RCD? And it's like he comes out and he ended up blowing his knee out in the middle of his match. So that's literally the only time I've ever seen Rick Boogs. Boogs. <laughs> Just what a fucking. Well, he he these... got in his Instagram picture with Dwana Claus. Hey, Dwana's going to be watching their careers with great interest. <laughs> like Palpatine, man. <laughs> he's like, hey, oh, he's like, oh man, you know, poor Dolph, you know. Oh, I always hated this day. Bitch, you were never affected by this day. This day <laughs> never you didn't break a fucking single sweat when this day would come around, bro. Do you like, think he hasn't worked like technically for the company in a number of years, but he's never been released? Like they're like, Yeah, he's part of our company. He's like, bitch, you you think he's part of your company. <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the extended family. Of, uh... He no showed his own anniversary show for God's sakes. <laughs> the, he so brought awesome. an egg. He gave oh, yeah. him the egg. <laughs> he sent an egg. <laughs> he sent an egg. What else do you want, man? Oh, so if fuck. you guys had, if you were AEW or hell, let's just say even Impact, and you had to choose between Matt Riddle or Dorf Ziggler, which one are you signing? I mean, strictly just for the 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 fucking burden that doesn't come with the the personal stuff. Uh, to put it lightly, uh, it would have it has to be it would have to be Ziggler, I guess. Uh, you know, he could join the Wingmen. He could join his brother in the Wingmen, the Hollywood yeah, Hunk. Hollywood Hunks. Yeah, yeah. So, the thing that always bugged me about him is because there's two things. One, he always dressed like. His two favorite wrestlers were Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and he could never choose which one. 
Yeah. So he would wear like like you know, chaps and stuff like Shawn Michaels, but it would all be like pink and black. And it's <laughs> to me that's like that's like these people that would here in California would wear like the half Oakland A's, half San Francisco Giants hats. Like we hate those people. When I was in sixth grade, a kid wore one of those hats to school and A's and Giants fans united in beating the shit out of them. <laughs> so to me it's like Brett and Sean, you gotta pick a side. Yeah. So there's that. And then he also had like his stand up comedian career. Yeah. And like they asked him like in an interview like who his three favorite comedians are, and he was like, Oh, uh, you know, I gotta go with the goats. I gotta go with Bill Hicks, George Carlin, and Lenny Bruce. And I'm like, fuck you. You <laughs> did not listen to it. You probably heard like two minutes of George Carlin and like one Bill Hicks album. I know for a fact you didn't listen to Lenny Bruce. You're a liar. That, that motherfucker likes Bill Maher and Dennis Leary. Get yeah, <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. But then you know, you, you on the other side of the coin is Matt Riddle. So yeah, that's not really that hard a decision now that I think about it. Uh, welcome <laughs> yeah. to Garza Pro Wrestling, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Moving on here, um, had a little bit of the Grand Slam, but there's not really much to say. Anything? Any Grand Slam notes? I mean, enjoyable. I don't really. I mean, Kingston Cesaro was a banger, was same a banger. as uh, MJF and uh, and Joe was sick. How about yeah. uh, Cole injuring himself on the run in? Fucking God, that's the thing, that's the thing I would do. <laughs> Man, Cole's starting to get that uh, same rap as like Edge and Christian did when they were like forty, like constantly getting injured. Yeah, he's uh, and he's wrestled with a t-shirt. He's got the body and the soul of a gamer. He should be. He should just like pack on the weight. I don't get why doesn't he just you know get some mass. I don't know. He's going to be muscular. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he's a bad looking dude. I mean, it's like no, he just doesn't. I don't know. Looks, yeah, it's he, he's literally choosing uh the the gaming lifestyle over uh over pro wrestling. It seems like the most pathetic thing, and he's done a series of pathetic things. But I think, in my opinion, the most pathetic was showing up for a pay per view wearing uh, Halo armor. And then That's the announcers well, having to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. Like uh, you could tell when there's some things that these guys do, like in AW or wherever, where they're like, "Finally, now they like, I don't have some corporate hack telling me what to do. I get to do my art." And it's like uh, they might have been right the first time around, not letting you dress like a fucking master chief or fucking. <laughs> shoot this terrible ass promo or telling you to put on some damn weight like yeah. <laughs> oh my god and speaking of uh being able to do their own thing dude that mjf entrance thing that was like a tribute to brett which was like a tribute to me and joe green in the tunnel yes. with the kid oh my god <laughs> yeah that was fucking art that was he great. just leads it because I was wondering, like, as soon as he started whispering to the kid, I was like, oh no, what did he tell this poor child? <laughs> That was great. That was a good match, too, of Joe. Uh, it was. That yeah, was a, glad to see Joe get his swagger back. You know, and I've always been kind of concerned about Joe just because he's kind of a California legend. And ever since that one bump in TNA, he's always kind of, like, slowed down quite a bit. And he denies mm. it. That one where he did, like, the senton onto the that was guardrail. Insane. That was yeah. the most insane bump, like... Oh, like, the, wasn't it like a drop kick to Sting in the lower levels or some shit? Yes. Yeah. And on he, like, concrete stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And he like landed spine first on like the handrail. And it was like, yes. oh, dude, why are you doing that? And ever since then, he's like, he'll deny it. But you can tell he has slowed down, which, you know, hey, he's in his 40s. I'm not expecting him to be like hammer pants, you know, Joe with the shiny pants back in the yeah. day. I'm not expecting that. But it seems like he's kind of come to grips with that, and he's yes. figuring out how to work around it. Yeah, I think that's the key thing, is it's no more trying to be who he was in the early 2000s as much as just changing. And, yeah. 
It's um, wild that WWE fired this man twice and kind of told him, oh, you're done, pal. Like, that's why like one of those rare instances where, like, nah, this guy knows what to do, I guess. Like, maybe for his own longevity, it's not good, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, and, you know, if he's wrestling two or three times a month, he's probably going to get an extra two or three years out of his career. Oh, yeah. yeah. Overall. So, guys, you know, it is, uh, it's midnight over here. So, uh, let's get to the final segment of, uh, you know, Pat, I am listener listening. question. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> Never. Fuck that shit. We um, don't take questions and we don't read the comments. <laughs> so, Harpo, you wanted to discuss a little bit about the Night Sisters and Dathomir, I think. Yeah, Legends? actually, they, de- they date back to Legends and they are part of, in my opinion, the absolute worst Star Wars book written. The authorized Star Wars book, that is. Uh, the uh, Dathomir, the planet itself. Gentlemen, would you be shocked if I told you that Dathomir was once owned by Han Solo? Color me shocked. He won the planet of Dathomir, which was this dirty little backwater, in a game of Sabacc. And all of this happens in the pages of the courtship of Princess Leia, which is an absolute dog shit book. Uh, Leia was being forced into a marriage with another noble and Han was all bummed out about it. So rather than, you know, do the manly thing, like any of us fiery Latinos would do, which would be to show up to the dude's house and beat his ass. Han kidnaps Princess Leia to keep the the wedding from happening. Galactic law, man. He's, <laughs> he's got to get around it. <laughs> so if I'm this whole thing has got me curious. And the, so like the witches of Dathomir, they play like a very, very, very minor role in that book. But I am, you know, if I soften with my old age, maybe this book wasn't as bad, but then again, it might actually be worse. So I think I'm going to make it a, a priority to go back and reread it just because oh, the fact that a, Han won an entire planet with sentient beings on it in a game, <laughs> and then who two, owned it before? What's that? Who owned it before him? Uh, the person that he was playing Sabak against. Oh. I can't remember who it was. I haven't read that book since like ninety four. But uh, yeah, so I'm kind of curious about that, and also him just kidnapping a woman that he loves because he doesn't want her to marry some other dude. If that's not love, if that's not the nineties. <laughs> It Fuck might it. be the poorly, but most poorly aged book out of all of those legends books. Good fucking god, that sounds like sitcom. That that's like Tim <laughs> Allen. It's like home. It's like a home improvement arc. If like yes, he had a daughter that he was stopping from. I guess it's well. I guess in the Last Man Standing, he's he has all daughters. So it's like a step by step story. <laughs> it's like a, well, something Cody would do. Well, something maybe Sasha Mitchell has done. <laughs> As legitimately, done, yeah. oh <laughs> shit, that just got dark real quick. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right, guys. So let's uh, so send off any any uh any final final words. What are we looking forward to next week with uh, Ahsoka? I mean, we're getting down to the wire. It's how many two or three more episodes left? Two, no, two more. Yeah, yeah. So. Guys, enjoy it because after this, there ain't gonna be Star Wars for a while until our strike demands are met. That's right. Well, I think uh, the Jude Law one is still is finished. Which oh, is that is the this? Skeleton Crew? Yeah, I think Skeleton Crew is. is oh, is it's in good the can. It's in the can. I think I don't know about Andor season two, but or I think Andor season two is not finished yet. So, yeah, the thing I'm looking most forward to in the next couple episodes, Sabine has to pay a price. Like, she can't just keep doing the wrong thing because she wants to and not have it somehow pay off in a bad way. So I'm curious as to what that's going to be. And she's keeping it from him, too, which she can't, like, there's no other time to talk about this. Like, uh, we'll talk about that later. Like, there, You know, I saw there was criticism about that moment, like, oh, when Sabrina and, and Ezra were reunited, it wasn't as, like, impactful. But then, mm-hmm. like, rewatching it, you see, like, 
he's asking, oh, did the plan work type thing? And then he's like, how'd you get here? And she brushes it off. And I think Mm -hmm. it's to like not put so much of the pendulum and like this moment is amazing to then be a complete heartbreak because she pretty much undid everything he did. Like yeah, completely. she basically uh, pulled a. Oh, yeah, took, she quoted a wise man that we know. Basically, it was, did the plan work? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, victory. <laughs>